a very special day for women all over the world. International Women's Day. Either great, small, a philanthropist, either poor or rich, learned, whatever category you belong to, today is your day. We celebrate you. And God is celebrating you. And we pray that from now on, your celebration will start. Never category you fall into. And it will last forever. Father which art in heaven, we hallow your name. Your name is the most high. You are the I am that I am. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You change it not. We honor you for whom you are. We salute your majesty. We are really grateful. Women all over the nations today, we are saying, our creator, you are great. You are wonderful. When you are creating human being, after the fifth day's work, you thought of it. That the only thing that is not yet good is because the man has no partner. And you now made a woman meet for him. Today, we women all over the nations, we are saluting you, our creator. Because after you have done it, you now said everything was good. We are your perfection. The perfection of your great work. We want to say thank you for giving us another chance to, re- to remember you as our creator and to celebrate everything you have put in us and what you want us to be here today all over the world. Father, we are saying thank you for creating us women. We thank you. And so for these short moments, we ask, Lord, that we give every one of us a listening here, and you will rebrand us. You will bring us to where you want us to be. And this is the main purpose of celebrating the International Women's Day today. Father, please hear our cry, and please let us have great testimony for today in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Women internationally, globally, are you still there? I believe you are waiting for what God has for you today. If God has not spoken, nothing happens. God spoke at the beginning of creation. And great things begin to happen. The first thing I would like us to think about is why did God create women? You should ask yourself as a woman, why did God create you? He created you because he wanted something good for the man that he created first. And after he has done it, he now said, Something is missing. Something is lacking. And what is it that is lacking? It is because no woman was there to be with the man. And after he has done it, he now said in Genesis chapter 137, God created man in his own image, and the image of God created in him, Male and female created he them. And then he blessed us. Now, why did God create woman? Or created women? Either man, woman or, or women. He created them according to Genesis 20, uh, chapter 1, chapter 2. He created them so that they can be helpmates for their husbands. That was the first reason 
why God created them. So that they can be helpmates for our husbands. Today, there are so many men outside there that needs help. It's not the help they get from their office servants or clerk, but the one they get from home, because charity begins from home. And starting from home, which we are the woman is, it makes a difference. Because this woman, the Bible says, even after he has created them, they were naked and they were not ashamed of themselves. Which means the man will be able to relax with a woman, with his woman, and she will, he will be able to pour out his mind, and will be able to even share with the with the man, uh, with the woman, whatever may be happening. He will be able to discuss this with the with the woman, and that is why you and me should listen today. Why did God create you? He created you to be an helpmeet for your man. And if you are not yet married, I pray you will get the right man at the right time and you will be married Amen. and you will be a proper helpmeet for your husband in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, other reasons why God created woman. You will be hearing, but I want you to know that you are fearfully and wonderfully made fearfully and wonderfully made. You don't need to change your sex. Changing your sex is an abuse of authority of the Almighty God. We are saying that God did not do know what he is doing. And he should not continue. Because God himself knew why he did it. He knew why he made you a woman. He knew why he made the man a man. This is very essential. And we cannot continue to abuse God of our sex. That is part of what we want to talk about in this great International Women's Day. This is very, very important that we note this. And every attempt the devil has put in your heart to change your sex, today we are asking through the grace of God and the power of the Almighty God that we help you to just not continue again in that abuse and you should come out of it. So, in Exodus chapter 2, verse 1 to 10, Exodus 2, 1 to 10, God created woman to be a midwife. You will know more about that one very soon. In Exodus 2, 1 to 10, it was true in Israel that a king came out with a law that every first boy in the family must be killed. But there were certain midwives God has chosen for the land of Israel who did not compromise. They did not act according to the king's instruction because the king of kings is the one who made these boys, these young ones, come into life. If you have ever been um, supporting any kind of, um, you, you know, no, trying to disable or any, and to make a, a, a boy or a girl useless in our life, you are making a great mistake. That is why abortion is not of God. Every woman is a midwife. Any form of abortion you have done up till now, May the Lord forgive you. These midwives, they did not compromise with the king to kill the children or the first body, any male child that comes from the children of Israel. Instead of that, they waited. And as God will have it, the women were delivering safely even before the midwives came. The point I'm bringing out here today is that we are all midwives. All women are midwives. To bring out children, to raise children, to make children live and not to die. I pray you will be one in Jesus' name. Sipora, the mother of, of, um, of um, Moses, 
is a good, great example in this. When the king made the law, he had a child. He kept the child under her roof. But after three months, when he could no longer keep the child, he thought of, how am I going to save the life of this child? Every woman is a midwife. We are supposed to bring forth and to save. It may be your own child or other children who have come to live under your roof. You have to save the life of a child. It's not to kill them, not to commit any abortion. Let that child comes forth. God knows why he has already prepared to bring that child to the world. Also, we are, we should be comforters. We should be able to comfort other people. Women are, they have soft stone comforting others and doing what God wants us to do rightly at the right time. And the Bible tells us that right from our mother's womb we knew us. So I'm taking you through your, the journey of your life as a woman now. So you didn't create yourself. God created you. He knew you before you were born. Right from your mother's womb. He knew who you are going to be. In Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. The Bible tells us that he knew us right from our mother's womb. So don't change your sex. Don't change your complexion. Don't change your hair. Whatever God, everything God has done, he has made it perfectly. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. And then, he has a goal for your life. He has a goal for your life. If you are going to be a doctor in life, right from the mother's womb, he has already predestined it. Whatever you are right now, God has predestined it. In Jeremiah 29 verse 11, Jeremiah 29 11 says that he has, he created us so that we can have a good end. The start towards us is thoughts of good and not of evil, so that we have, can have a good end. I pray that all of us listening to me today, we shall all have good ends in the mighty name of Jesus. As the Lord has laid in my heart to be able to share with all of us today, I am one of you. How are we going to make our womanhood an exemplary one? That which people will see us and they will glorify our Father which is in heaven, our maker. The number one is that we should know God. We need to know God. We need to know God in the real sense of it. Not just be hearing about his name or just uh, reading about him. Which means when you know something, it means you can tell a story about him. Like he told Moses while he was sending Moses on an errand, Moses asked him, what do I tell, what do I tell Pharaoh when I get there? He told Pharaoh, just tell, uh, he told Moses, tell Pharaoh that I am that I am. If you don't know me before, I am introducing myself to you, just tell him, my name is I am that I am. So the first thing women of all nations in this are great today to rebrand ourselves and to be what God wants us to be, the first thing for us is that we should know God. Knowing God will bring a great, a great change into our lives. This is very, very important. In Daniel 11.32, Daniel 11.32, the second part of it says, but the people that do know their God shall be strong. I believe there are strong, strong people in the house. And even if you are weak, today you become strong in the name of Jesus. They shall be strong and they will do exploits, which means you will do more than whatever anybody has been doing before. This is our wish for you in this great day. Number two, the women we are talking to today, we want to, to fear God. Because in fearing God, you make a way in your life. All the doors that have been closed will be opened. 
The Bible tells us in Proverbs 31 verse 30, Proverbs 31 verse 30, that a woman that fears the Lord is the one that God himself will bless. You say, a woman that bless, that fear the Lord shall be praised. We need to fear God. Proverbs 30, 30, 30 and 31. A woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Everybody love praise. When you are praised, you look, you, you look high, you, you know, you become very bold and you are happy. But when you are abused, then nothing is left for you. But you are always being abused. In order to live a life of praise, then you need to fear God. Brethren, we need to fear God. This is very important. Because when you fear God, you make a way for yourself, even in this fearful world. Then, what else should we do? We must be a woman of wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. You get wisdom, you get understanding. Somebody who doesn't have wisdom, we call him a foolish person. No woman wants to, no man wants to marry a foolish person. No, no person, no organization wants to employ a foolish person. Even King Nebuchadnezzar once said, somebody who needs, who has excellent spirits. And this is the journey we are taking ourselves to the, including me. I want to improve in wisdom. Wisdom is essential. In that Proverbs chapter 4, the Bible tells us in verse 5 to 9, that we should get wisdom and get understanding. Fools cannot build house. Because Proverbs chapter 14 verse 1, Proverbs 14 1 says, it's only the wise woman that builds her home. You can see today in our society, homes are being wrecked down because of lack of wisdom from the woman in the house. Divorce coming because the woman in the house is not wise. Children go astray because the woman in the house is not wise. Everything comes down to the hand that rocks the cradle. That's what the adage says. They say the hand that rocks the cradle, they build the nation. Women globally today, do we want to, at the, at, at the scene of our nose, that nation should be wrecked? Because we are not playing our roles. We are not wise and we don't seek for wisdom. This is very important. If our hands are rocking the cradle of the young ones and we nurture them to when they become adults and we pour out the wisdom God, God has given to us, then, brethren, we have made our life for what God wanted us to be. That is the purpose of today's meeting with you. And it's very important and very crucial. Wisdom is important. You can't build your home with foolishness. There is nothing you will take out of foolishness but insults. And your children will just, they will go haywire and they will become drug addicts, all kind of evil. But if you are wise, you know what to do. So what are the things we need to do to rebrand us? We have talked about being a midwife, being wise, fearing God, know God, fear God. Then we must follow Jesus, we must follow Christ. I'm a pastor. I cannot talk to you on this ground without mentioning Jesus or talking about the Bible. Because that's where I live. Acts 17.28, that's my one of my favorite passage. Acts 17.21, in him I live, I move, and I have my being. And I'm very proud of my God. Anywhere I go, I'm boastful of him. Because he's the one who has made me to be where I am today. And without him, I can do nothing. I'm ordinary dust. And if he has done me, he has done good to me, and I'm where I am today. I must sing his praises. 
and I will sing it forever. I will sing it forever. So, we should follow Christ. Even Mary, the mother of Jesus, it will amaze you that she was a disciple to her son. Disciple to her son. The Bible tells us in Acts chapter 1 verse 14, Mary, the mother of Jesus, was among of those who waited in the upper room and they waited for the power of the uh, of Pen- in, on the day of Pentecost. He was she was among the 120 people who had this power. If Mary, the mother of Jesus, can follow Jesus, who are we not to follow him? And yet, we want the blessings of Abraham. We want the blessings of God. Then, what now should we be? We must be a Deborah of our life, of our time. I'm talking to nations today. Deborah was the only woman in the nation of Israel in her own time that the Bible recorded this. That she arose in the time of trouble. She arose. She was not sitting on the floor. She was not sitting down. The spirit in her star her up that, ah, I must not be opening my eyes in a time like this. And my nation is getting rotten. The Bible says that the, in the highway, people fear to walk on the highway in those days. Because all that was happening today in all the nations happened at the time of Deborah. Robbers are snatching ladies' bag, even on the bike. They are doing all kinds of things. But Deborah arose in Judges chapter 5 verse 7 as a mother. You are a mother in your land, in your nation. What is it that you have seen that is not good and you kept and you are not doing anything about it? We are asked, God has given you the strength. He has given you the honor. He has given you, has placed you in high places. Where you should exhibit the power God has given to you to take your nation out of, of mess. The Buddha arose. And the Bible tells us that she, she judged Israel in those days for 20 years. Many of us, we are judges in our land. What have we done to the corruption in our lands? What have we done to, to make sure that so many things that are wrong with, even with our children, are corrected? Immoral dressing, all kinds of evil fashions. Anybody who wants to sell anything good today, we just have a woman whose breasts are outside the, um, uh, the, the dress. That's what they use for their adverts. Is that good enough for our nations, for our women of today? Women arise as women as Deborah arose. This is our time to correct all evil that is happening in our nation. So many crimes are being committed. We arise. We can do it. We can arise as Deborah did. Then we should be an Abigail of our time. An Abigail of our time in 1 Samuel 25, verse 32. 1 Samuel 25, verse 32. Deborah protected her husband. She protected her husband. How many of us have protected our husband? Don't we play our husband into the hand of the enemy? How, how, how much have we done to make sure that all our, our husbands are saved from evil? When we see evil coming on the way of our husbands, what have we done to make sure that evil does not happen? Abigail heard about it. That Naba was coming to kill her husband. Because of what her husband did that was wrong. She went ahead. She prevailed over the, over the hunger of, of neighbor, of uh, David. And then, finally, her husband was not killed. If you say we are people, enemy are planning for your husband. And you don't do anything to, to make sure it didn't happen. Then, 
it is not a good thing for you. You are not the kind of woman that we can call a virtuous woman. What else? Number five. Be a Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene in the Bible. The Bible tells us in Luke chapter 8, verse 2 to 4. Luke chapter 8, verse 2 to 4. That this woman was possessed of the evil. Like you will say, a witch or whatever. But at the end of the day, she submitted herself to be delivered. And she followed Christ. Many, many of the women are full of all kinds of evil spirit today. And you carry it to anywhere. You bewitch other men, other women, with even children under your care. You put evil spirit in them and they begin to misbehave. Hey, don't forget, you cannot just do it and you will not be punished for it. Mary Magdalene confess, why don't you come to God and confess your sin of witchcraft and be free and live a new life? Don't forget we are saying that the message is purposely to rebrand us, women in all our nations, in this global day of women. I believe every form of witchcraft anybody is carrying all over and do not allow our homes to rest and our, our, our organizations to be at peace or to be productive or to prosper. Today, all those evil spirits, the God of heaven will strike them and they will no longer be in operation. Number seven, be a ruse. Why can't you be a ruse? Who is ruse? Ruth was a Moabite. <coughs> and she married one of the children of mommy Nahomi. Unfortunately, the husband died. In Ruth chapter 1 verse 16. But she did not leave her mother-in-law alone. She said, you should not entreat me not to follow you because... Mommy Naomi tried all she could to just tell her or to dissuade her to follow him. Her. Don't follow me. I don't have any other child you can marry. But Ruth said, I will follow you. Women all over the world, where you are married to, do you love your husband's relatives? Do you accommodate them? How much more of her, her mother? Do you long suffer with them? Ruth followed the mother of her husband, even to go back to Bethlehem. At the end of the day, God compensated her. She became the grandmother of the Lord Jesus Christ. She gave birth to Jesse, to Obed. Obed gave birth to Jesse, and Jesse was the father of David. And when Bathmius, the blind man, wanted healing, she was shouting it. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. I believe in the next year, by this time next year, your name will receive a broadcast in heaven and even here on earth for doing good. Be with your husband. Be with your husband relatives. Live for them, care for them. Help them in the time of their need. Don't forsake your husband. Don't forsake uh, say, um, um, all our people. Be with them. Number eight, be an Anna. It's not barrenness that is um, noted concerning Anna. Anna uh, had another virtue that is so good that everybody should emulate. Hannah made a vow with, with Samuel, the only son that was given. She went back to pay her vow. Every woman listening to me, you must develop a heart of gratitude. Because that one is a sign, part of the sign of end time. Ungrateful hearts. Develop a heart of gratitude. 
Whatever anybody does for you at home, your husband, your children, even your your household, maybe you have a steward or not, always say thank you. Anna said thank you to God. And God gave her three daughters, more three daughters, two sons. I believe every every woman hearing me, you will be our Anna and God will remember you for good and you will have increase. And whatever you are praying for, he will answer you in the name of Jesus. In 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 21, it is, it was, it is recorded in the Bible. Then be a Dorcas. Who is Dorcas? Because we say, oh, I'm a widow. All these things you are talking about. Ah, what, what, what is my concern? What kind of rebranding I can be? We didn't hear that Dorcas has another husband. And if God wants you to remarry, you can remarry. But don't be a threat to the society. Don't because of, because you are a widow, spoil the people in the church by, by doing evil, or the pastor, or this and that. But be yourself. Be what God wants you to be. Don't forget while I was talking to you, I told you that God has predestined you right from your mother's womb. If you now find yourself to be a widow, let's see the life of another widow. In Acts chapter 9, verse 36 to 39, Dorcas, Acts, at, Acts 9, 36 to 39, the woman full of good works. I love that part. The Bible tells us that this woman was full of good works. What can people say about you? Are you a woman of good works, of evil works, backbiter, gossiper, somebody who doesn't want it well with other people? Dorcas was a woman of good works. Ah, why was this recorded? When she died, everybody was looking for Pastor Peter. Come and raise Dorcas for us. Oh, she made bonnet for me. She gave me this cloth. She did this one for me. A widow who should be cared for was caring for other people. Are you ready to care for other people? This is the international women. They rebrand yourself. Come out of, of stinginess. Be a woman of compassion. The world is, they need everybody who can help one another now. We should come out to help one another. Whatever you don't you see, people don't have. If it is within your means, why don't you supply it? After all, whatever you have, you are not going to die with it. When they are burying you, nobody will bury your clothes with you. They won't bury your car with you. They won't bury your food with you. Instead of wasting the grace of God in your life now and the gift of God in your life, use it to, to bless other people. Be a Dorcas. Then be a Lydia. Who is Lydia? Very rich woman. Of purple dress, they call her in the Bible, in Acts chapter 16, verse 15. Acts 16, 15. She accommodates people. Today people are looking for accommodation all around. If you have one, please release it. What do you want to do with the room you have locked up over the years? What do you want to do with your shop you have locked up over the years? What do you want to do with all other things that people can benefit from and you are hoarding it, you are not using it, you are not releasing it? Who owns everything that you have? Lydia accommodates people and it takes care of them. Then, be an Esther. Who is Esther? A young lady who, who God has chosen to save a nation. <laughs> Wherever you are today, what is your plan for your nation? Do you pray for your nation? Do you look for how a boy or a girl can be saved from a life of addiction, addiction to sex, who are 
and they already they are already in the brutal they are already in the uh, hotels how many lives have you saved how much more of saving your whole nation esther said in esther chapter 4 14 to 16 if i perish i perish a young lady in the palace the king offered him her half of his arcane his kingdom if you are, I'm sure you will go for half of the kingdom of, <laughs> of the king at the detriment of the destruction of your people. This is the time every one of us should rise up and save the people of our nation. Whatever it will cost us, let's play our role. If Esther can do it, you can do it, I can do it. And God will help us in Jesus' name. Finally, I would like to round up with a woman that the Bible calls a virtuous woman. Do you want to be a virtuous woman? Let's see the example of this woman, whom the Bible calls the virtuous woman. In Proverbs chapter um, 31, is there. The woman, virtuous in the sense that she has so many virtues that all other women should emulate and we should say oh how i wish i can be this how i wish i can be that brethren number one of this woman was that she gives her her children good advice good advice to her children how many of you have have been sitting down your children and counseling them in the way of the lord what have you been doing? So many of our children are going astray. We don't cancel them. We don't do anything. This woman, even her son that became a king, King Lemuel, Lemuel and she told her, him, this is what a king should be like. When your king, your child attains a, 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 a higher place in the world, you just will be just worshipping him or just worshipping her. That is not it. You should be a counselor. This woman has so many virtues. That's why they call him a virtuous woman. And this is what we want all of us to be. Even as we are rebranding ourselves today in all the nations. Do you want to be virtuous? And when I'm saying about this, most especially... Helping our children, we have to our husbands, we must be diligent. Helping your family. Don't leave the expenses of the family to your husband alone. Don't leave it to him alone. The Bible tells us that this woman, she rise up early. <laughs> and it is in the verse 15 of it, so she rises only while it is yet night. Give us meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. What do you do with your time? You rise up early to do what? What do you think about how your, your children will eat? Many will leave home very early to work. They won't make arrangements for what their husband will eat, what their children will eat after school. They don't just care. This is not why God created you. Let's come back home. Choose who you want to be in this new year of International Women's Day 24. Year 24. We all need to be rebranded. We all need to have virtues that our children will carry with in their lives and be, and they will be, you know, giving reference to it. Oh, my mother used to do this. My mother used to be this. My mother is like this. I pray today. This will be our portion. We shall come back to virtues. Virtues that will be a legacy for our children, for our generations and generations to come. And we change everything concerning our nation, most especially at this end time, that everything is going, is going upside down. Remember, Dockers, remembers Deborah who rose up. Are you going to arise? Or you are going, you are already, you, you, you like the way things are going on? Whatever role we can play, let us play it. And God will help us. 
If you are there, you have not accepted Jesus, don't forget the first statement I said. Only those who know their God will do exploits. If you want to do exploit as a woman, you must know God. There's no shortcut to it. John chapter 15, from verse 1, it says, he introduced himself, I am divine, you are my branch. Only the ones that are in the, in the vine can bring forth fruit. And you, we as women, we are supposed to bring forth fruit. And I pray we shall not be barren. Amen. Everything concerning us shall not be barren. We shall be fruitful. Women internationally. Meet with Jesus today. Receive a changed life. He came to my life. And ha, I cannot tell you so many things God has done in my life. He has done so much. And that's why I cannot close my mouth. Luke chapter 12 verse 14 says, To whom much is given, much is expected. He has given me much. And I'm a debtor if I don't share with you. And I pray today will be the beginning of a good thing in your life. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you. For everyone that loves to give their life to you today, we say, God, in your infinite mercy, you will come in your power, in your mercy, and save their lives, and bring them closer to you, and wash them with your blood, and give them a new name that is a child of God. And Lord Almighty, I pray for women all over the world today, a day of rebranding. Please, we pray that wisdom will be our portion. Wisdom will be our portion. We will no longer remain in our foolishness. We will have understanding. We will have good homes and we shall build our homes with wisdom. And we will support our husband because that was the primary assignment the reason why God created us to make, be and help me is we will be an encourager to our husbands. We will not allow death to come upon them. We will be the Abigail of our time and we shall be Deborah of our time. Making ends meet and overruling all forms of bad manners in our nations. And we pray, Lord, that everyone that is barren will open their womb and they will begin to have their children. By this time next year, they will have testimonies like you did for Anna. And for all the widows, wherever you are, we say the God of the widow will be your husband and he will use you like that of Dorcas and he will protect you from all evil. We also pray that we be an Esther. Somebody who will, who will be so passionate about their nations and will do everything to make sure that their nation is not destroyed. And finally, we ask that every virtue that we don't have as women today, you will register it in our lives and we become women of your own hearts that we too can have a name and we shall do exploits. Father, we thank you for giving us a day, even in the nations, that women can be recognized to have a day. It's only you, God. And so, Father, we pray, all that we ask for today, you will do it more than we have asked, and your name shall be glorified. Thank you for everything. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord.